Now to make our dragon fruit wine, we will be using the following. I've got six pounds of ripe dragon fruit, three and a half cups of sugar, the juice of a quarter of a lemon. This time around, I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Classic Wine Yeast, primarily because of its alcohol tolerance of 13%, and it's designed to bring out intense color and excellent flavor complexity while preserving tannin content. Now, of course, if you don't have that, this still works. Now, we'll be using about a quarter to a half a teaspoon of regular bread yeast. And the reason for that is that once we add it to boiling water and kill off the yeast cells, it will act as a yeast nutrient for our regular wine yeast. Once again, if you don't have wine yeast, you can use bread yeast as your fermenting yeast. I'm going to be using straining bags, but this, of course, is optional. I'll need a gallon of clean, filtered water. We'll need a wide mouth fermenter to do our primary fermentation in. It's got to have a wide mouth because we need to be putting our fruit and or string bags inside. After a week of primary fermentation, we'll need to transfer or rack our juice from our primary fermenter into our secondary carboy, which is a process that we'll repeat every six or eight weeks or so until the wine is clear enough for our liking or taste to our liking. We will need an airlock with bung to fit inside our secondary carboy to allow CO2 gases to escape and keep bugs from getting in. I should point out that our primary fermenter does have its own built-in airlock. If yours does not, then you'll need an airlock for that as well. We're going to need an 8-quart pot. This is also optional, but it's very helpful to have a hydrometer with testing tube to allow us to determine how much total alcohol is, is present in our wine. And of course, using your food grade sanitizer of choice, whether it's One Step, Star Sand, or other suitable sanitizer, we want to make sure all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we begin making this wine. And of course, that is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. All right, let's begin this process by scooping out the contents of our dragon fruit. which in this case happens to be the light version of the dragon fruit. Scoop that out. Let's get as much of this as possible. And we just want to give this a rough chop. Go ahead and get that into the string bag. and continue on with the process. Now, because we are dealing with the white version of dragon fruit instead of the red, I want to try and give it a little bit more color. So I'm going to use the outer skins as well. All I want to do there is to um, peel off any of the green foliage that's on it. And I'll just do this real quickly because I want to just show you. Trim off the ends. And of course, this had more foliage than I thought. Just peel the ball off. And go ahead and give those a rough chop. And then get those into a stringy bag. All right. I could have chopped them all up, but you know what? I think enough is enough. So I'm going to just go ahead and tie these off. Let's get these in a pot. Now, I've poured off 
about a cup of our water. And that's to uh, make a little bit of room for the sugar that we're about to put in later. And also to account for some of the juice that the fruit will give off. If we're trying to make a one gallon batch, if you're making a four liter batch, then you can go ahead and leave in the whole gallon of water. Cover back on and let's bring that up to a boil. All right, now that our water has come to a good rolling boil, we can go ahead and drop in our quarter to a half a teaspoon of bread yeast, which again is acting as our yeast nutrient, which is, needs to be in a dead state before it can be of any use to our live nutrient. We can go ahead and turn off the heat. Won't be needing that anymore. And we can go ahead and begin adding in our three and a half cups of sugar. Since the water is hot, it should dissolve relatively quickly. Yeah. All right. Following that, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and add in our dragon fruit. The reason why we're adding it in now is because A, we want to kill off any wild yeast that might have been on the fruit and we want to make sure that we can also kill off some of any harmful bacteria that might be on there put our lid back on and we can wait for that to come down to room temperature all right with our juice now come down to room temperature let's go ahead and add in our quarter wedge of lemon which is all that we need to provide just a little bit of acidity. Ah. Adding in the skins gave it a pretty nice color. I like that. We don't really want to get any, any, any lemon seeds in there, so let's go ahead and strain it out. Just a good squeeze to do. I mean, you don't have to scrape off the edges or anything. And for the moment, let's put our cover back on. All right, now with our freshly sanitized spoon and hydrometer and tube, we're going to go ahead and take our initial hydrometer reading. Let's give that a little stir. And let's squeeze down on some of the fruit. Help them release a little bit of sugar. Before I take this reading. All right, it looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.066. All right, the next thing we need to do is to transfer our juice from the pot to the fermenter. And I think uh, having both been sanitized, I'm gonna start by transferring the fruit. And then trying my best to transfer the juice. Put our lid back on. And move on to the next step. Now, to begin the process of turning our juice into wine, we of course will need to add in our yeast. I generally use a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast per gallon. You can use more if you like. I generally tend to spread my yeast kind of evenly across the top. You may choose to hydrate your yeast or however you feel most comfortable doing it. I've had success doing it this way, so this way I'll have success. Get that in there. Give it a little swirl to get it off these bags. Put my cover back on. And take another opportunity to point out that this air, this fermenter does have a built-in airlock. If yours doesn't, you will need to get an airlock for your fermenter. 
Okay, it is now time to label our creation. We are making a dragon fruit wine. We started it on this date, and our original gravity or starting gravity was 1.066. Okay, so what happens next will be this. For the next three days at least, we want to go ahead and take our cap off and with a freshly sanitized spoon, we're going to go ahead and give our must a nice and vigorous stir for two reasons, especially for those of you who are not using straining bags to break up a cap of fruit that will be floating on the top, preventing your yeast from getting oxygen. And for those of you with straining bags, we will give your yeast just a little bit more oxygen to work with. And you can do that for the next three days. Okay, following that, uh, I mean, you've got up to five days, but I use it three days to be safe. Following that, you don't want to stir it up anymore because then you begin to run the risk of adding too much oxygen and start the process of possibly oxidizing your wine. Now, of course, we're going to leave the fruit in the uh, primary wide valve fermenter for at least a good full five to seven days, and I'll go ahead and take it out. And I'll go ahead and let it uh, continue to ferment. Uh, for another two or three weeks, after which I will probably rack it or transfer it from this fermenter into a second fermenter, which is a carboy that I showed earlier. And we'll continue that process every six to eight weeks or so until the wine has become clear enough or until the wine is ready to our liking. Generally, I like to leave it in the carboys for about seven or eight months before I bottle it. And then I will begin the tasting of it uh, at the 12 month mark. During the bottling process, uh, I'll degas it and I will um, back sweeten it if necessary, and it usually is necessary to sweeten it to my taste. And then again, at the 12 month mark, we'll crack open a bottle and uh, see what it tastes like. So here we go dragon fruit wine, initial process. See you in 12 months. And if you like what you see here, click on that subscribe button, uh, become a member, or become a patron. I would appreciate it. Oh, one other thing. Uh, everything that I've used here, I purchased with my own money, and therefore you can find Amazon links to everything in the comment and description sections below the video. So, I'll see you when this one's done. All right, it's been a year. It's time to go ahead and give our dragon fruit wine a taste testing. Uh, a few particulars. One, this started out with um, hydrometer leading of uh, 1.066 which was a little bit low in my opinion. I usually like to shoot for 1.080. Uh, as a result, the uh, ABV of this one only came in, or it went down to a hydrometer reading of 0.994. It came up with an ABV alcohol by volume of 9.45%, which is kind of on the low side from my point of view, especially if I'm spending that much money on fruit. I kind of want something that's got a little bit more kick to it. So even without going any further, I can simply say that uh, the original recipe, which had a, uh, what, three point, uh, three and a half cups of sugar, I would up that to four cups of sugar right the bat and then make your adjustments from there. All right, that having been said, a uh, couple of other things. Um, one, uh, you may have noticed in the first part of this video where this wine had a nice pink color. Well, that color kind of disappeared. It's now your your standard Chardonnay looking yellow. Uh, there are no labels on any of the bottles uh, as you would normally see them. I did print the labels up. I am gonna put the labels on the remaining four bottles, but since this is kind of a rest job and I did this kind of like day before yesterday, I really only had time to put labels on the bottles. This bottle does not have a label. Uh, in terms of clarity, uh, yeah, it's, it's clear with a very, very slight haze, no big deal. That is being said, uh, uh, it was bottled, I'm going to do this, this was bottled about five, six days ago. I'm just out getting to the point of being able to do this video. And of course, it's been pasteurized. Uh, that evidence said, let's go ahead and crack this open. Oh, it's also been back sweetened. Uh, let's go ahead and crack this one open. I did do a hydrometer reading of the back sweet level, but I misplaced that number somewhere in my, my my whole office and it's setting that time to dig it out. However, that having been said, uh, 
Let's go ahead and do the taste testing this one right away. I'll make this a short blast because it's like 11.37 in the morning and I've got taste to do this afternoon. <laughs> um, all right, so we're drinking a wine, a white wine, uh, with a low ABV level. Uh, so basically you're drinking it for flavor, you're not drinking it for effect. Uh, hmm, before I put my, my tongue to the test, uh, couple of other things. One, when I bought the uh, dragon fruit, it was on sale. I uh, managed to get it for $2.99 a piece as opposed to its normal $4.99 a piece, which would have made it cost prohibitive in terms of uh, doing a plan for this channel. I don't care how much I splurge from time to time. I probably couldn't spend that kind of money on it during this wine. But $2.99 was the price. It was kind of like on the high side of my, where I don't really spend a lot on doing wines for this channel, but let's give it a shot. Doesn't really smell like dragon fruit, but then again. Okay, surprisingly, you can smell alcohol at 9.45%. Okay, that's having been said. That's surprising. Not only can you smell the alcohol, but you can actually taste it on your tongue. Um, it's a slight bit acidic, very slight. Didn't get with parking using lemons as our acid, and so you would expect uh, some, of the, some of the citric notes to, to come through. Even during the inhale, you can get that alcohol smell. I won't say that it's got a light flavor to it. It's got flavor to it. No, it's a whole lot, but it's got flavor to it. It's not like you're drinking something where it's, it's basically just a sure cold ice. Uh, it's got it's got a dragon fruit flavor to it. As I recall from trying to taste the dragon fruit when I first made it, couldn't really, couldn't really afford to buy one just to taste it, just to eat it, to find out what dragon fruit really tastes like. Then I had to use everything I had, including the skins. Um, so I'm kind of remembering, it's kind of sort of what the little bit of dry fruit that I had tasted like. But again, it's got a very tiny bit of edginess at one year. Um, yeah. Is it ready to drink? Yeah. Would I give it some additional time before I open up a, a, an additional bottle? Probably so. Changes again that I would make to the original recipe that will be shown in the description and comment sections. No, no, not the comment sections. Maybe certainly in the description section of the video. Why uh, up this up to at least four cups of sugar? Uh, there's no way you're going to get a deeper color, a deeper red color using the dragon fruit that I used. Uh, again, I am still surprised that I lost all that color uh, during the fermentation process. Um, right, what else I'm going to say to that? Uh, was it worth the cost? I mean, okay, that can have a little bit. Cost is a relative term. It's not bad. Uh, would I have been upset had I paid full price for these uh, for these uh, for those dragon fruits? I don't know if I would say upset. <laughs> I would certainly seriously question whether or not that was a wise decision. But again, cost is relative. This channel tries to do things on the on the down low, on the cheap, <laughs> or whatever possible.
But for something that's light, uh, I don't want to say light on flavor, but just light in general. Uh, this is not bad. I guess the real question would become, um, I had to make sure the red record button was on for a second there. Uh, is this something that I would make again? I'm sorry, but I'm trying to through is still expensive. I mean, for me in this job, well, if I make it again, I'll no longer be doing the channel, but for me, would I make this again? Probably not because of the cost of the dragon fruit, especially when I know I could make a uh, much less expensive wine that's actually, I won't, it's hard to say better, but considering the cost, most more cost efficient <laughs> in this wine, uh, tempted to have another sip, but I really do want to, things I have to do today, which includes driving behind the wheel of a car. So I'm gonna put that aside. Uh, and that is all I'm gonna say about the dragon fruit money. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> Considering the cost. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. So if you like what you see here, please click that like and subscribe button. Uh, I still got another 15 or so batches of wine that I have to do uh, taste testing videos uh, throughout the remaining course of the year, uh, after which I'll decide what I'm going to do with this channel. But beyond that, I'll see you in the next video.